largest investment in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. And I can attest, as your Vice President, and as the proud father of a United States Marine pilot, we are finally given our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard the resources and support they need to defend this nation. You know, and it's not just been about standing with those who serve in uniform, but we've also stood with all of you who have served in the uniform of the United States. In fact, if you're a veteran of our armed forces, would you just mind raising your hand in the air and giving us a chance to say thank you one more time. When Joe Biden was vice president, we all remember, we saw years of scandal at the VA that shocked the conscience of the nation. Remember that? I mean, we literally had veterans that were dying, waiting to get health care at VA hospitals. But under President Donald Trump, we signed the most sweeping reforms of the VA in 50 years. We fired more than 3,000 VA employees that were given our veterans the care they deserve, and Veterans Choice is now available for every veteran in America. Support for our troops and their families. Support for our veterans. It's just one more reason why we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House and why we need Michigan to send an Army combat veteran to Washington, D.C. We need John James in the United States Senate. for our national defense, but in our first three years, after Joe Biden had spent the last, the previous eight years trying to tax and spend and regulate us back to a growing economy, President Donald Trump created the greatest economy in American history. And now in the midst of a global pandemic, Joe Biden wants to raise taxes by four trillion dollars. President Trump, he cut taxes across the board for working families and businesses large and small. We rolled back more federal red tape than any administration in history. We fought for free and fair trade. We unleashed American energy, and in just three short years, businesses large and small created 7 million good-paying jobs, including 112,000 jobs right here in the Wolverine State. In our first three years, unemployment reached a 50-year low across America. It's the lowest unemployment for 20 years in the state of Michigan. And wages were rising across the board. What means the most to the president is me. Wages were rising most rapidly for hard-working, blue-collar Americans. The forgotten men and women of America were forgotten no more. I don't know if you heard about it, but just this morning it was announced that Weekly jobless claims just hit their lowest level since March. Michigan is back, America's coming back, and Motor City is back. You know, it really is great to be in Pontiac. I think this might be my first visit here. And in Waterford. We're not far from Pontiac, right? It's just, I was going to mention, great legacy and tradition. My first car was a Pontiac. Thought that might do me some good. It was. We used to flip over the air filter in that thing. Did you do that when you were young? Yeah, it had a 454 four barrel in it. Man, that thing. That thing would haul, and it would make a lot of noise when you flip that air filter. I'll tell you, let's just hear it for the great tradition of craftsmanship in Waterford and Pontiac. And under President Trump's leadership, I'm proud to report to you the automotive industry is roaring back all across the state of Michigan. 
Last year, General Motors announced they were adding about 400 jobs. Fiat Chrysler already is building a $1.6 billion plant, and they committed to 6,400 jobs in the Motor City right here in Michigan. And it's been because of those policies, less taxes, less regulation. But it's also been because we have a president who's been fighting for free and fair trade that puts American jobs and American workers first. And when it comes to international trade, it's amazing to think when we took office, half of our international trade deficit was with communist China. $500 billion a year we were losing to China in our trading relationship. And Joe Biden, he's been a cheerleader for communist China all along the way. He actually said the rise of China was a positive development. And he dismissed last year the idea that China was even a competitor. But under President Donald Trump, we made it clear from day one. When it comes to China, the era of economic surrender is over. We impose tariffs and we're going to stand strong until China opens their markets to what we make and what we grow once and for all. When it comes to NAFTA, I don't have to tell the people of Michigan, but this Hoosier also knows about NAFTA. I mean, in the 25 years since NAFTA was signed, we had 60,000 factories that closed all across America. We did. Many of those jobs moved south of the border, and many moved overseas. Now, Democrats for years used to talk about how bad NAFTA was, but Joe Biden never lifted a finger to renegotiate it or reform it. But under the man who wrote The Art of the Deal, America got a better deal. NAFTA is gone, and the USMCA is here to stay. And it's a win for Michigan and a win for America. And I don't know if you know, but under the USMCA, 75% of auto parts and duty-free cars have to be made in North America, and 40% of them have to be made by workers making the average hourly wage that workers make in the United States of America. Now, the people of Michigan deserve to know not only that Joe Biden never lift a finger to reform NAFTA, but when it came time to replace it with the USMCA, his running mate Kamala Harris was one of only 10 senators to vote against the USMCA. She said the USMCA didn't go far enough on climate change. Kamala Harris put her radical environmental agenda ahead of Michigan auto workers and Michigan auto jobs. It's one more reason why Michigan needs to say no to Joe and yes to four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. manufacturing state like Michigan and all across this country. Joe Biden and the radical left want to crush American energy under a two trillion dollar version of the Green New Deal. Remember in the last presidential debate, President Trump had to remind him that he supported the Green New Deal. Might have to remind him again tonight. I mean, their $2 trillion version of the Green New Deal would raise the cost of electricity for every home and business in Michigan. It's true. I mean, they're talking about requiring 4 million businesses to be essentially retrofit, 2 million homes to be retrofit to live up to Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and AOC's Green New Deal. President Trump. He's been a champion of American energy and American energy independence. We ended the war on coal, and today America is a net exporter of energy for the first time in 70 years. Incredible. You know, when Joe Biden was vice president, America actually lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. And the last president, who I saw was out on the campaign trail yesterday, 
He said those jobs were never coming back. Do you remember? I mean, they referred to our part of the country as the Rust Belt. And there was a lot of rust on the belt when they were in charge. Come on, come on. Remember, after President Obama said that those jobs were never coming back, he said, quote, what magic wand do you have? needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs in just three years, including 17,000 jobs right here in the state of Michigan. Manufacturing is back. When it comes to health care, even on health care, you all remember their plans. Remember Obamacare? All the promises that they made. The last administration, Joe Biden's vice president, they said, if you like your doctor, you can keep it. Wasn't true. They said, if you like your health insurance, you can keep it. Wasn't true. They said health insurance premiums would go down. When we took office, health insurance premiums had doubled under Obama. And Joe Biden has a plan to literally take the socialized medicine option of uh, uh, Bernie Sanders and put it right in the middle of Obamacare. It would send us on an inevitable path to socialized medicine here in Michigan and all across America. President Donald Trump, we got rid of the individual mandate. We've been fighting to lower the cost of health insurance without growing the size of government. We've lowered the cost of prescription drugs. Medicare Advantage premiums dropped by 54 percent in this state. We're going to have the best health care system in the world, even better, and America will never be a socialist country. Men and women of Michigan, we got a choice to make. You've got to talk to your neighbors and friends about it. And you trudge back through that field to get back to your cars. <laughs> God bless you for your life. I mean, honestly, when you think about our economy, I really do believe the choice that come November 3rd here in Michigan is between a Trump recovery and a Biden depression. There's this nonpartisan study, Congressman Molinar, I don't know if you saw it, it just came out a day ago. It said that under Joe Biden's economic policies, America would lose 5 million jobs. And the average income of a typical American family would drop by $6,500 a year. So you've got to ask yourself and your neighbors and your friends, in every day between now and Election Day, who do you really think can bring this economy all the way back? In this? A career politician who spent 47 years in Washington raising taxes, stifling our economy under an avalanche of regulation and economic surrender, or a proven job creator who will keep cutting taxes, rolling back red tape, and fight for American jobs and American workers. For our families, for our jobs, for an American comeback like we have never seen, we need four more years of President Donald Trump. We fought for prosperity, fought for American energy and American workers, and President Donald Trump has stood strong for the rule of law. As I stand here today, I'm proud to report to you that our president has already appointed more than 230 conservatives to our federal courts at every level. And they are all men and women who will uphold the God-given liberties in our Constitution, like the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, and the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Now, last month, we rightly paused as a nation to honor the life and service of the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But when the memorials were over, President Trump fulfilled his duty under the Constitution of the United States, and he nominated a brilliant, principled, conservative, 
woman who loves the Constitution to the Supreme Court. He nominated Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Isn't she great? I'll tell you, I'm a little partial. I mean, she is from Indiana. And you know, President Trump and I, we call on Democrats in Washington to give Judge Barrett a respectful confirmation, and we're going to keep calling on her. But we have reason to be concerned. I mean, you all remember during her last confirmation hearing, don't you? The ranking member on the Judiciary Committee Democrat from California, actually said she was concerned about Judge Barrett's nomination because of her Catholic faith. She said, and I quote, the dogma lives loudly within you. And Hollywood elites have been criticizing Judge Barrett ever since. Well, I got news for the Democrats and their friends in Hollywood. That dogma lives loudly in me. That dogma lives loudly in you. And the right to live and work and worship according to the dictates of our faith lives loudly in the Constitution of the United States of America. Now, the Senate is uh, going to continue to discharge their duty to advise and consent. And I'm proud to report, even though the Democrats didn't show up, the Senate Judiciary Committee voted Judge Amy Coney Barrett out of the committee. She's headed to the floor for a vote on my name. I'll make you a prediction. Come this Monday, Judge Amy Coney Barrett it's going to be Justice Amy Coney Barrett. You're going to fill that seat on the Supreme Court. Now, the people of Michigan deserve to know, after 150 years with nine justices on the Supreme Court, leading Democrats in Washington are talking about packing the court, adding seats to the Supreme Court, so they can nominate radical leftist judges to advance their agenda from the judicial branch. Now, Joe Biden did say that he's going to tell the American people what he'd do about court packing after Judge Barrett was confirmed. Now he's saying he's, he's going to tell us after the election. I mean, I saw a clip this morning on the way here. He told 60 Minutes it's a live ball. <laughs> He's going to tell us after the election, after millions of Americans have cast their votes, whether he's going to pack the court in what would be the biggest power grab in American history. I mean, come on, man. The American people deserve a straight answer, Joe. office in the land, the American people deserve to know whether you're going to respect the highest court in the land. I mean, we know what's going on here, don't we? I mean, I tell people I was born in the morning, but not yesterday morning. I mean, look, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris aren't telling us what they're going to do because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to pack the court with liberal activist judges if they win this election, but we're not going to let it happen. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years, and we're going to send John James to a larger Republican majority in the United States Senate. We're going to stand for the rule of law and an independent judiciary. I promise you that. And every day since this president took office, I'm proud to say that we have stood without apology for the men and women who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement, and we always will.
President, I know what you know. Men and women who serve in law enforcement are some of the best people in this country. They're people that literally get up every day and count our lives as more important than their own. And those who serve in law enforcement deserve the respect of every American every day. In fact, it kind of comes with, uh, comes with the job description. We've got a lot of law enforcement people around me. Would you mind just showing them how much you appreciate all the law enforcement people? President Trump and I will always support the right of Americans to peaceful protest. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Burning businesses is not free speech. Now, all summer long, all Joe Biden ever talked about were peaceful protesters, remember? As the American people literally watched businesses and communities burn to the ground. The truth is, Joe Biden would double down on the policies that have led to violence in America's cities. I mean, when you start to withdraw support from those who protect and serve, you only embolden those who would do harm to our families and our communities. Now, Joe Biden justifies it all by saying that, in his words, America is systemically racist. And he and Kamala Harris often say that police officers in this country have a, quote, implicit bias against minorities. When Joe Biden was asked if he'd support cutting funding for law enforcement, he said, yes, absolutely. And Kamala Harris recently praised the mayor of Los Angeles for cutting $150 million out of the budget of the LAPD. Well, let me make you a promise. With four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House, we're not going to defund the police. Not now, not ever. We're going to back the blue every single day. I mean, we all know we don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and supporting our African-American neighbors and friends, minority families and all the families in our cities. We have done both for the last three and a half years, and we're going to keep doing both for four more years. Under this president, we invested with the strong support of people like John Molinar. We supported funding in the COPS program that allowed for the hiring of 4,000 additional police officers. When violence broke out in our cities, we launched Operation Legend. And in cities across the country, we worked with state and local law enforcement. We've already arrested more than 3,000 violent offenders in our cities, restoring peace to our streets. And at the same time we've been supporting law enforcement, I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to a president that saw the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans, the highest funding for historically black colleges and universities in history. We created 8,000 opportunity zones in our major cities, passed criminal justice reform, and we have fought to give educational choice to every family in America. President has proven we can stand with law enforcement, stand with our minority families, and I promise you we're going to keep doing that. And we're going to have law and order in every city, in every state, in this nation, for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us God. So we stood for the rule of law, stood strong with law enforcement. We've also stood by our most cherished liberties. You know, when Joe Biden was vice president, we saw a steady assault on the freedom of religion in the American people. One administrative act after another. The last administration actually hauled a group of Catholic nuns 
into federal court to force them to compromise their faith to live under the mandates of Obamacare. President Donald Trump, he restored the conscience rights of doctors and nurses and religious charities, and President Trump ended the assault on the little sisters of the poor once and for all. Beyond our values and our faith, I couldn't be more proud to be Vice President to a President who has stood without apology for the sanctity of human life. Where Joe Biden and Kamala Harris support taxpayer funding of abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. President Trump reinstated the Mexico City policy that denied federal dollars to any program that promotes abortion around the world, and he signed a bill that gave states the right to defund Planned Parenthood. <laughs> president Donald Trump is the most pro-life president in American history, and we're going to stand for the right to life for four more years. So in our first three years, think about the progress we've made strong support of our allies in Congress. We rebuilt our military, revived our economy, stood for law and order, liberties and life. But I want to say from my heart, none of that would have been possible without the strong and consistent support of Michigan's Republican delegation to Congress. That's why right after you re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years, Right after you sent John James to the United States Senate. We need to send Congressman John Molinar and Eric Asaki to a new Republican majority in the House of Representatives that retires Nancy Pelosi once and for all. I mean, when you look at all that we accomplished in those first three years, there's only one way you can describe it. We made America great again. And then I don't have to tell anyone here or any American. Then the coronavirus struck from China. But before the first documented case of community spread anywhere in this country, President Donald Trump did what no American president had ever done. He suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. Now, now Joe Biden said that was xenophobic. He said it was hysterical. He actually wrote in January that suspending travel from any country would, quote, make things worse. But I can tell you, having led the White House Coronavirus Task Force over the last eight months. <laughs> President Trump's actions suspending all travel from China saved untold American lives and bought us invaluable time to stand up the largest national mobilization since World War II. Searched billions of medical supplies to our incredible doctors and nurses all across Michigan and all across America. We developed new therapeutics that are literally saving lives as we speak. And before the end of this year, we're going to have tens of millions of doses of a safe and effective coronavirus vaccine for the American people. That's what leadership looks like. That's the leadership of President Donald Trump. So we're going to keep providing Michigan everything that you need. And can we just take a moment? And I got, uh, I got Eric Osaki here who's been a, a career in healthcare. Can we just show our appreciation for the nurses, for the doctors, for the first responders, and everyone that's been there for our families throughout this pandemic. They are heroes all. making sure that our health care providers have all the support they need to give anyone impacted by the coronavirus the level of health care that we would want a family member of ours to have. We'll keep all of us doing our part.
We'll keep slowing the spread. We'll keep protecting the vulnerable. We'll keep saving lives. And where Joe Biden is talking about shutting down the economy, we're opening up America again. You know, it's amazing to think just the last five months after America lost 22 million jobs at the height of this pandemic, with that strong foundation that we poured together in those first three years of a strong economy, and with the unprecedented support that Congress Molinar and others provided to families and businesses in the midst of this pandemic, we've already seen 11 and a half million people go back to work, including 600,000 people right here in Michigan. We are opening up America again, and we are opening up America's schools. We just announced we were sending 100 million 15-minute tests to all the school nurses around America, Eric. We're going to make sure that we can get our kids back in the classroom where they belong and keep them there safe and sound. We're not just opening up our schools in the classroom. Thanks to President Donald Trump, Big Ten football is back. Michigan State's going to be back on the gridiron, and the Wolverines will be back on the field at the Big House come this Saturday. Get ready. You know, men and women, it really is great to be with you today. I appreciate you all coming out. But I expect you're here because you all know. Not only the choice in this election has never been clear, but the stakes have never been higher. I mean, you stood in the rain and you trudged through that muddy field. Not, not, to see, not to see your vice president, you did it because you love Michigan and you love America. taxes, open borders, socialized medicine, the Green New Deal, defunding the police, packing the courts. It's clear. Joe Biden would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for the radical left. Now, Joe Biden says that democracy is on the ballot. Well, I think our economic recovery is on the ballot. I think law and order are on the ballot. But I also believe there are things much more foundational to our country, much more fundamental to who we are as a nation. You know, in this election, I think when it's all said and done, it's not going to be whether America is more conservative or more liberal, whether America is more Republican or more Democrat, more red or more blue. I think the choice in this election is whether America remains America. Whether we're going to chart a course, build on the highest ideals of this nation, of freedom, patriotism, liberty, justice for all, or whether we are going to let Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and the radical left take our nation on a path socialism and American decline. So for our freedom, for all the ideals that have always made America great, we need to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden will never be president of the United States. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. As the president said, we got work to do. Because for all that we accomplished in those first three years, for all this president has done to see our nation through this global pandemic, that's just what President Trump calls a good start, right? I mean, we're just getting started. And over the next four years, we're going to distribute that vaccine and we're going to defeat the virus. 
We're going to maintain America's unrivaled military might and ensure peace through American strength. We're going to make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world and end reliance on China once and for all. We're going to uphold religious liberty, the freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms. We're going to hire more police. We're going to ban sanctuary cities. And we're going to stop the indoctrination of our kids and restore patriotic education to America's school. As the President said in Mount Rushmore, we're going to teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. You know, men and women, I have to tell you, I didn't know the president that well before he picked up the phone and called me and asked me to join this ticket. But I said yes in a heartbeat. Because I saw what the people of Michigan saw. I saw the vision grounded in the highest American ideals. I saw the leadership qualities and the determination that can make this country great again. I'll never forget the night that he called. We'd been tipped off that among a group of Americans he was considering as, as running mates that, that we were going to get the phone call. We'd prayed all the way through it. My wife was standing right next to me. Phone rang. I picked up the phone. I heard that familiar voice. And he said, Mike, it's going to be great. And you know what? He was right. It has been great every single day. We've served shoulder to shoulder these last four years. And I, some people think we're a little bit different. But actually, we've gotten to be very close friends. And I want to tell you, I've been there when the cameras are off and the Klieg lights are on. I've been there every day at his side. And I promise you, I promise you, there has never been a day gone by against overwhelming opposition by the Democrats and their allies in the national media. There's never been a day gone by that President Trump hasn't gotten up and fought to keep the promises that he made to the people of Michigan. Now it's our turn to fight for him. So I got a couple things I got to ask you to do before I uh, Head over to Indiana. I guess you'll go back to the Hoosier State today. Because I'm going to do what I'm first going to ask you to do. First thing I need you to do, Karen and I are going to do tomorrow morning. Vote, Michigan. Vote to reelect President Donald Trump. I mean, I heard early voting's already started here in Michigan. So uh, maybe after we're done here, only about 1 o'clock, you can go down to the Waterford Township Clerk's Office, 5200 Civic Center Drive, here in Waterford. They're open 8 to 5. Go and vote for President Donald Trump. And remember, friends don't let friends vote alone. Bring a family member. Bring a co-worker. And vote to re-elect this president for four more years. And secondly, after you vote with a friend, I want you to spend every remaining moment of the next 12 days telling people why you walked through that muddy field to get here. Really. 
Tell them what. Tell them all that we accomplished in those first three years to make America stronger and more prosperous, to strengthen the constitutional foundation of our liberties in this nation, to stand with law and order. Go tell them all that we accomplished and tell them about the choice that we face. So, you know, I was out at the airport the other day, standing in the rain. Mike showed up and he just like talked for like a whole hour. Just about everything that we've accomplished and what we can do with four or more years. I really do believe that when Michigan made history in 2016, it was because people were talking to each other. I mean, you remember all the pundits, all the polls were writing us off back then, right? The people of Michigan knew different. You knew we could be strong again and prosperous again, and you talked to your neighbors and friends at worship and at work, and you need to do it again. I'll never forget that election night. We were at the campaign headquarters in New York City. And I was standing right here, and the president was standing next to me, and my wife and our kids were here, and the whole Trump family was there. We were looking up at these big TV screens on the wall. You know, every time a state had come in, he'd like punch me in the shoulder. He'd say, South Carolina's in, boom. He'd say, did you see that? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, Indiana came in, boom. Right, good. All right? But I'm telling you what, when Michigan came through, I thought he was going to knock me on the ground. So you got to do what you did before. Go tell the story all across Michigan why we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. two great conclusions that I believe more now than I've ever believed in my life. Everywhere I've gone, I'm more convinced than ever that America is a freedom-loving nation. And America is a nation of faith. You know, as we travel across this land, the sweetest words the President and I ever hear are when someone will say, I'm praying for you. We hear a lot. And so I would just say if you're if you're of a mind to bend the knee or bow the head from time to time, now'd be a good time to do it. And over the next twelve days, I'd encourage you to pray with confidence. Claim those ancient words that Americans have clung to through much more challenging times than we could possibly imagine. The Americans who, uh, who cleared the forests that settled this state, the Americans who have fought in the wars, who endured the great challenges in our nation. Those ancient words that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and turn, he'll do like he's always done in the long and storied history of this nation. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land. This one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America. Pray for all the American people. It'll make a difference. It'll make a difference. And I leave here today with renewed confidence Grateful for your support, grateful for your attendance here today, and more confident than ever that we are just 12 days away from a great victory. All across Michigan and all across America. And I just know if all of us do all that we need to do between now and Election Day, we're going to make Michigan and America stronger and safer than ever before. We're going to make Michigan and America more prosperous than you could possibly imagine. We're going to make Michigan and America more united than ever before. And with John James in the United States Senate, and with Congressman John Molinar 
and Eric Asaki in a new Republican majority in the House. With President Donald Trump in the White House for four more years, and with God's help, we will make America great again. Again. Thank you all very much. God bless you. God bless America. Now let's go get it done, Michigan.